Hey, Magic fans. Welcome back. This is your captain speaking here on Captain Clyde's MTG. It's day two of leaks and spoilers for Wilds of Eldraine. And we got some doozies, um, say the least. We didn't get a whole lot, but hey, with all the leaks we got beforehand, I think we've probably seen half the set, probably. But anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe before we get started. It helps support the channel. I do appreciate it. Other ways to support the channel are links in the description. You can... Uh, do the easy way and uh, subscribe a little bit to my Patreon for monthly dues. Or you can do the thing that everybody likes to do. Just hit up the eBay store. Buy a card once or twice a month for a couple bucks. You get something, I get something. It's all good in the end. But um bump So, without further ado, let's run through today's Wilds of Eldraine. First off, we have the... <laughs> Oh, God. Sorry, guys. As you know, I don't look at these in advance, but this is the Regal Bunnycorn. So many ways to think about that. Uh, this one white one and one <clears throat> uh, rabbit unicorn is a rare. Power and toughness equal the number of non-land permits you control. This is really good. Um, at worst, you lay this on turn two, <clears throat> it's a 1-1. One, one. In white weenie... On turn two, this is a 2-2 two, two for two, which is also fine. But on turn four and white, or turn three in white winning, when you lay two more creatures or two more permanents, and this thing is suddenly a 4-4, four, four, now it's starting to get out of hand. This could be the card that white winnie's been looking for to make it playable in the long game. Because the real problem with white weenie is it's all about the weenie. Giggity. And at the end of the game, <clears throat> once it takes one big creature and shuts the whole deck down, this thing could change all that. So I'm excited to see how this plays out in the format. Even though it's not a human or a soldier, it is the mighty bunny corn. <laughs> Gotta love it. All right, Howling Gale Fang. Two green and two for a 4-4 Vigi. Uh, this uncommon has haste as long as you own a card in exile that has an adventure. This is actually a pretty good card. Uh, probably we'll see standard play because adventures will be a thing and a four mana 4-4 four, four Vigilance is nothing to sneeze at. Um, definitely going to be great and limited. I mean, four mana 4-4s four, four regardless are just amazing. Um, but just the ability to give it haste, powerful. So powerful. Next we have Stone Splitter Bolt. Red and X has Bargain. For those of you who don't remember, Bargain is you sacrifice artifact, enchantment, or a token. Bone Splitter X deals X damage to target creature or planeswalker. If this spell was bargained, it deals twice that damage. All right. So let's 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 stop for a second there. So for two mana, it'll deal one damage. If you bargain, it'll deal two. For three mana, it'll deal two damage. If you bargain, it does four. For four mana, it deals three or six damage. This is going to be a very good card, and it's an instant. Um, the only thing that's really going to hold this card back is the fact you can't target an opponent with it, which is probably a good thing because this could get it out of hand very quickly. So, moving on. Next, we have Ice Out. Ice Out? Anyway, uh, two blue and one instant has bargain. Spell costs one less. If you bargained it, counter target spell. Basic common counter spell. Uh, I do like it. It has bargain pictures. Hot. Get it? Hot. Anyway, I guess you could say it's stone cold. Get it? Ice out. All right, I'll stop. I'll stop. All right, so moving on. This is a good card. Uh, it's going to see limited play, and it's probably going to see some standard play as well. It's a good counter spell. Um, bargain can easily make it two mana. Like, it, this is a thing. Next, we have the Callus Sellsword. Uh, for a black and one, you get a 2-2. Two -two. That when he enters the battlefield <clears throat> with a plus one plus one counter on it for each creature that died under your control this turn. So a great way to go ham on your opponent. Let him wipe most of your field, trade creatures with you, and then lay this thing as a big nappy um, for all the creatures that died. Also, it has burned together for one red sorcery. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to any other target, then sacrifice it. This is basically a fling. And that's not a bad thing. God, I'm a, I'm a poet and I didn't know it. All right, all right, I'll stop, I'll stop. But yeah, this is going to be a great card. Um, it's going to be real good in aristocrat-style decks. 
Another way to sacrifice a creature, plus get extra damage out of it on the way out. Plus, you could also then play, play this after you burn together, quote-unquote, when you fling something. You could fling something for one, uh, and then for two more mana, lay this, make a 3-3 three, three out of it. Um, and if other stuff has died, it also gets bigger. I think this, is, this Uncommon has lots of potential, uh, and I think we're going to see, see some play in, in several formats. Next, we have Tattered Rat Keeper. That's interesting thought. Uh, one red and one for a human. It's a 2-2. Two, two. When, whenever a rat you control becomes blocked, it gets plus 2, plus 0 in a turn. There's going to be rat decks. So many rat decks. And that's okay, because we like rats, you dirty rat. Anyway, <clears throat> next we have Johan's Stopgap. So basically, you just put the finger in it. Anyway, that's what, uh, well, I won't go there. Uh, a blue and three sorcery has bargain. Spell costs two less if you bargain it. Uh, return target non-land permit to its owner's hand. Draw a card. This is great sorcery spell for limited. Um, probably won't go anywhere past that, but this is perfectly fine for a common. Nothing wrong with this. Draw a card, bounce, bounce something. Yeah. All right. Agatha's Soul Cauldron. This is the thing that she fell into and got killed. Oops, spoiler alert. That's in the lore. My bad. Um, two colors for legendary artifact. You may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to activate abilities of creatures you control. That's already pretty neat. Uh, creatures you control with plus one plus one counters on them um, have all activated abilities of all creature cards exiled with Agatha's Soul Cough Cauldron. Okay. You tap it, exile target creature card from a graveyard. When a creature card is exiled this way, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. Okay. A lot to take in here. Hear me out. So this thing goes in for two. It's graveyard hate. Plus, you can exile troublesome cards out of your opponent's graveyard, uh, or yours if you're feeling froggy. Put plus one, plus one counters on your thing for f no mana, just tapping it. Um, every time you exile, like, scavenging ooze for no mana, make any creature a scavenging ooze. And if you don't exile a creature, you can still exile a card. Like, and the ability to to exile a card and give it the abilities because of the plus one, plus one counters is just absurd. And also, if you exile one creature and you give one creature a plus one, plus one counter, and you do it again the next turn and give a second creature a plus one, plus one counter, they both get all the abilities. Because it says creatures you control with plus one, plus one counters have uh, on them have all activated abilities of creatures exiled with the cauldron. This has so much potential. This is going to see play in standard. Um, it's going to see play in older formats. It's only two mana. It's, it's graveyard hate. It's creature pump. Uh, it's manipulation. Uh, activated ability. I mean, th this. I. It slices. It dices. It. It makes Julian fries. Like there's so much this thing does, and so little it doesn't. I don't see how this doesn't see play in almost every deck. Anyway, moving on. I like this card a lot. If you couldn't tell. We have Lord Skitter's Butcher. They could have drew that a little better. I'm not lying. Uh, a black and two for this uncommon. It's a two, three. When it enters the battlefield, you can choose one. You can create a one, one black rat that can't block. Sacrifice another creature. If you do, scry two, draw a card. That's actually pretty good. Uh, creatures you control gain menace until the end of turn. That's all right. Uh, so basically, you get three, four worth of power and toughness for three mana, which is good. But the ability to play four of these in a deck and draw, scry two, draw a card for three black plus getting a creature will probably make this playable in standard at least. In limited, this is going to be a powerhouse. If you're playing black, you best be drafting this card. It's just too good. Because even in limited, the ability to give something menace could just win the game. All right, moving on. Here comes a section I like to call, you got some nerve. Uh... The reason I say that is because this is the uh, enchantment section or the enchanted section where they reprint the cards from older sets into the special slot. And the reason I call it You Got Some Nerve is because as we talked about in the last video, a lot of the cards that they're reprinting were just in Commander Masters in a pack that cost three times as much as this pack, where now you get it at three times less cost. Some would be like, well, I'm glad it's cheaper. Others would be like, you just robbed me and took my wallet. So without further ado, let's take a look at what we got this time. Starting off, we have a Ground Seal reprint. Not bad. Uh, used to see play, doesn't much anymore. Uh, it's a green and one. It enters a battlefield, you get to draw a card. It does replace itself. Uh, stops people from being able to target graveyards. So, it's fine. Next, we have 
Phyrexian Unlife, a white and two for you who don't know. If you have less less than zero life, you life you have zero life or less, you can't lose the game. Um, all damage is dealt to you as though it was a source had infect. So if you get to minus ten, you will lose because of infect counters. I do want to say this art is phenomenal. Um, it's not normally the kind of style that I like, but there's just something about this and the card all together and the framing, the border. It really, really clicks. I really like it. Next, we have Un Oversold Cemetery, a card that was just printed uh, in uh, Dominaria Remastered. So, yeah, you got some nerve. Uh, Oversold Cemetery, black and one. Uh, beginning of your upkeep, you have four more creature cards in your graveyard. You may return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Yeah, anyway. Nice art, though. Uh, Leyline of Lightning. This is a very interesting one for a choice. It makes me wonder if they're going to have to do this to all the Ley Lines. Two red, two. If Leyline of Lightning is in your opening hand, obviously, like any Leyline, Lion, it goes in the battlefield for free. Um, whenever you cast a spell, you may pay one Cuddleless. If you do, it deals one damage to target player or Planeswalker. Next, we have Fraying Sanity. A blue and two. Enchant player. Being of each end step, enchant player puts top X cards in the library into the graveyard where X the number of cards put into the graveyard from anywhere this turn. Pretty cool art. So we haven't had a whole lot of you got some nerves yet, so that's good. Intruder Alarm. So, blue and two, whenever <clears throat> creatures don't untap, during the controls untap steps, whenever a creature comes into play, untap all creatures. Uh, this is a card of nothing but shenanigans. Commander players are going to be happy that they do, if they don't have this, they're going to get one cheap. If they do have it, they're probably going to upgrade to all these cool new arts. Because i got to admit, it's a little better than the old art. <clears throat> Just saying. But, again, not a bad reprint. I'm okay with it. Dawn of Hope. Uh, this is where you kind of got some nerve. Uh, not because you printed it in an expensive pack, but because it's worth nothing as a rare. Uh, and you can buy it in an older set or get it for less than a buck. But anyway, uh, white and one. Whenever you gain that much life. Whenever you gain life, you may pay two colors if you do draw a card. For a white and three, you can make a 1-1 white soldier that is life-linking. So it kind of fuels itself and does this thing. Next we have Mana Flare. So this hasn't seen a reprint in a very long time. Red and two enchantment. Whenever a player taps a land for mana, it gets uh, one additional land. Or one additional, one additional land. God, that'd be broken. One additional mana that of, uh, of mana that land can produce. Uh... This is old school from back in the day. Hasn't seen a reprint in a while. Uh, so I'm actually happy to see this be in here. It's not going to bust too many things up or cause too much trouble. Unless you know how to play with it. But anyway, uh, mainly going to be in there for Commander and some older formats. And I think it's cool. I think something like this deserves a reprint. It is a staple from Magic's past history that I think just doesn't get enough appreciation. All right, moving on. Next, we have Intangible Virtue. I don't know what's up with the art on this one. Uh, one white and one enchantment. Uh, creature tokens get plus one, plus one, and have vigilance. Uh, seen plenty of reprints. It is just an uncommon, so nothing special to see here. Moving on. Hardened Scales. You got some nerve. Just came out in several reprints. Uh, this one for one green, obviously, if you don't know. Puts, when you put a plus one, plus one counter on something, it gets an extra counter. Um... If you put four, it gets five. If you put three, it gets four. You just add a counter to whatever it is. Um, but maybe due for a reprint, but honestly, probably not. Uh, kind of half a dozen one sixty the other for me. Here we have Repercussion. Uh, two red and one enchantment. Whenever creatures dealt damage, Repercussion deals that much damage to that creature's controller. Um, we haven't seen this in a while. Uh, so I'm okay with this. These are the kind of things I would expect to see in this kind of set. Um, I know they want to put stuff in there worth money to make people buy it, but at the same time, the damage from reprinting cards that you just reprinted into a fi from a $50 pack to a $4 pack is way much more damage than just reprinting some cool older stuff that you know is not legal and standard anyway. So yeah, yeah, just do the thing. Come on, just, just do the thing. Anyway, guys, thanks a lot for watching. I do appreciate it. That's all we got today. Uh, stay tuned tomorrow as we review what gets spoiled tomorrow. Uh, and as always, till next time, be kind. Hope to see you across from the game table. Later, player.